I'm trying to look at the snap counts here because one of the things on defense I was a little disheartened by was the lack of Witherspoon out there. But no, thirty nine percent, thirty nine, and they were carving us up, man. I feel like if we put them on Pringle, because mm-hmm. I don't remember a pass getting complete around him. <clears throat> no, yeah, yeah, uh, the pick on the um, he had the pick on the all the all sides, and then yeah. he had the PBU in the end zone as well. I was just laughing because my man, he, he goes, he, he'll celebrate. <laughs> Yeah. They said, bro, it's 23. Down 23. Nothing. You over here, like, yo, I got him. But you know what? Last time he did that, he got the picks. We had right. the comeback. Right. We had the comeback. So I'm, I was good with it. It was like kind of a big play. Yeah, I, I was laughing. I was like, yo, it worked last time. Let's see if it works again. It didn't work. And I was like, all right, this, this, yeah, this ain't a good, says that's good. Man. But no, I, I would have liked to see a little bit more of him. Because it was, it was Cam Sutton and Joe. Yeah. They were the guys. And Joe, you, 72%. Yeah. Cam Sutton, 99%. Well, as we transition to the defense, how did you feel about those two guys? Joe was getting torched, man. Okay. Okay. It's funny how a week can change things, huh? Yeah. Just last week, hey, man, it's pay that man. He's ready to go. Lock him up. He's the guy. This week, we're like, yo, he's getting torched. And it's not even like getting torched by like... Pringle. The guy Pringle. guys, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's that's part of the, the dilemma when you're talking about as this team, as a GM, right? Do you... Make your bed with him, franchise tag him, extend him, whatever. Or do you go elsewhere? Because you can see at times where he has started to take a step back. It's not the biggest of steps, but just I mean, at his age at that no, position. He'll be in the right no, place yeah. and stuff. But. He'll be good, but it's just like he's not able to do it like what we would need right now. And that's the difference. And it's like if Joe is your number two corner or even your third guy, it's, man, night and day. But if you're trying to have him be your one every week right now, we're going to have some mismatches, man. Guys that are a little bit more fleet-footed, younger guys. Yeah, it happens, man. That's a part of the game, man. That's a part of it. But like I said, for me, there was just the crazy part of one week, you know, is a different different mentality, different perception. Whereas this week, because guys are making these catches now, and it's you feel it. It just felt different, man. I mean, even some of the stuff where it's just like, all right, if it's – Performance related, that's one, or, or like physical ability related. But then it was like, man, I know on the one with 40 catching the bomb, I'm like, get your eyes off the backfield, baby. Get your eyes in the backfield. Oh, that was more on him. Got your eyes in the backfield. Because he, he, he had the, sh- was that a short zone? So he, it, so, and then because then Minka was right, the one, it looks really bad. Right. On. But Minka, Minka is just covering because for Joe, Joe was supposed to stay with that dude. And you saw how late it happened. What ended up going on was this, right? <clears throat> Once Mahomes come out the pocket, Joe essentially just, you have to decide. Yeah, you decide do you stay in coverage and let the guy run, or do you come out of coverage? But now you give a guy opportunity to throw the ball. Joe was kind of caught in that in between, and he did the sin of a of a cover guy. That's a sin, is it? Yes, because we always say like, what can kill you faster? Mahomes not going to run forty yards. It would have been ten yards. You know what I mean? Whereas you come out of that coverage to go force him to run out of bounds or to make a tackle, and now you got forty catching a bomb. You know what I mean? Like those are the type of things where it's just like. All right, come on, baby. You know better than that. And he knows that. That's the thing. It's not nothing new to Joe. Joe knows this. But sometimes, man, it's like, yo, you just had a bad play. But when you throw that, or you're trying to with make a play. other stuff, right? Force that's where, where you're like, yo, you gotta gotta get that part going. Yeah, yeah. I would have liked to see Akello yeah. out there a little bit more. But yeah. it seemed like right from the jump, we were trying to get some more heavy packages out there because mm-hmm. I saw my let. And if they still have Cam Sutton and Joe Hayden slotted as our starting yep. corners, then I guess that's why you're gonna have them out there whenever you do that base type of stuff or try to do those heavy formations. Yeah. But I yeah, I would have liked to see him because I do think he's legit talent wise. Yeah. It's just well, we only got two games left. But he's been playing really good. He has been every man. time he's been getting in. So I think he could have locked up either Pringle or Hardman, whoever. Right, just it was. one of them and then maybe that changes the dynamic of the game. But the way that thing was flowing, I mean at times I'm like, bro, can we guard any of these dudes? I know. We're seeing <laughs> like, these no-name tight ends even like, catching it, across the middle. Bro, I was really like, that's not Kelsey. Who is this guy? Who is this, who is this dude, man? Yeah, Spillane <laughs> oh looked like preseason Spillane. Yo, chill, chill. You got to go with Spillane, man. Come on, man. He ain't had no option, bro. He ain't had no help out there, man. It was him and Shover, bro. No, I'm playing. <laughs> You're right, because I think there was one or two times he was on one of the receivers. Yeah, and I was like, ah. And the one was like kind of good. Mahomes made a yeah. really nice pass the one he time. He like threaded it through. Mm-hmm. But some, like, I had probably one or two where Spillane was in coverage. And remember we talked about um, dating back to the Ravens game a year ago. I was like, I don't mind when he gets beat in coverage. My issue is when he gets beat to his leverage side or if his eyes are bad. 
he did have like two throws that were completed on him where if his eyes are on his work, it's different. It's either a PBU or he's at least making the tackle on the catch. Eyes in the backfield, you get separation. Now that catch is made and that guy's catching and running it. Those are some of the things that I had issues with Spillane and coverage. But at the same time, it's like, I don't expect Spillane to be an elite cover guy. No. That's not his game. You know? I was expecting us to stop the run a little bit better, though. I, I did as well. That was, to me, what I was more fresh with. And that's why I was like, stats can be the misleading. Because you look at the stat sheet, and like you said, you see, what, 13, 14 tackles between him, Minka, and Schober. And it's like, Minka's tackles look good, but he's doing them because he's having to save everybody. When I'm watching Spillane and Joe, even though they had a ton of volume, they weren't a ton of like impact tackles. It was more of the downfield. They already didn't got four or five yards. Let me just drag this guy down. Like, I'm not a fan of that. Like, granted, you have to make the play. And that's why I was like, I respect it. Because, I mean, we've seen in games where it should be like that for Bush. And it's like, well, how do you only have two tackles? And I get that <laughs> part. Seriously, like, it's a part of yeah. it. But you could just see where it's like, that still isn't necessarily a good performance. It's like, yo, he still has, this is what we have to attack more at that position. And we're not doing it enough right now. Yeah, if you would have yeah. asked me right off the bat, did Spillane have a good game without checking the stats, I would have said no. I, I didn't think he played good at all. Yeah. And then same thing with Schubert. It goes back to what you said. Yeah, I saw some mm -hmm. plays out there, but overall, I uh, felt a little lackluster at times. Yep. And then Minka, I thought he played awesome. So, mm -hmm. man, when you told me to pull up the stat sheet and I saw Spillane. See, that's what I'm saying, tackles, bro. I'm like, no yeah. way. I thought he played bad. Right. And you're asking yourself, like, how does that happen? But that's why you can't always just read the stat part because it will mislead you a little bit right there, man. <laughs> As y'all can see my hat today, man. It is by N to the AM. You know, we had to it's go with that hat. smooth, sleek look. This low-key, like, this is your look right here. I know. This is your look, bro. I know. This is your look, it, bro. It's a, it's a good hat, man. I've worn it multiple times. Now, I, I will say this, man. It is very comfy. It's very breathable, too. You can see the mesh on the backside of it, man. Keeps the hat nice and smooth. But more importantly, we got promo codes, ladies and gentlemen. So if you use the promo code MOTES, 10 all right moats with the number 10 you will receive 10 percent off of your purchases at into the am website is right there into the am.com but man it's awesome man the graphic tees they have the basic t-shirts that they have obviously me and deke always talk about our contrast and style i'm more of the graphic t-shirt guy Deke's more the basic t-shirt guy. Yep. But the beauty with Into the AM is they have packages where you can get monthly subscriptions where they send you their freshest, newest color schemes, whether you want the basics or if you want the graphics, all for really nice pricing. And like I said, you can use that promo code that's right there on the screen to add to the pricing discount with that as well. So big time shout out to the homies at Into the AM. 